to me, talked about being disrespected. The great ones, what do they do when they feel like they've been disrespected? They elevate their game. They need him to attack, 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 and it starts tonight. Irving and Curry, one-on-one. -on -one. Irving puts it up. It's good! Kyrie Irving from downtown! Rebound taken by Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup! Oh, blocked by James! James out of nowhere, skies to the rim. Like Coach Jackson said, he's a bad, bad man. Taken by Spades, final seconds. It's over! It's over! The Cavs are the world champions. Coming back from three games to one down, they reel off three to win it. And the celebration in Cleveland has begun. I'm home. I'm home. Uh, this is what I came back for. I I'm at a loss for words. Uh, this is unbelievable. I it doesn't feel real right now. So the Cavs title this year ended a 52-year championship drought for the city of Cleveland, but it also continued another streak. For the 33rd straight year, either Shaquille O'Neal or somebody who has played with Shaq played for the NBA championship. Let's take you through the years starting back in the 83-84 season. Now stay with me here, people. Greg Kite, Byron Scott, Kite again, Scott for two more years, and John Sally for two years, Horace Grant for three years, Robert Ory for two years, Steve Kerr for four years, Shaq with a three-peat, Kerr again with Steve Smith, Eldon Campbell, Ory again, Shaq again, Ory again, bunch of his Celtics, and then Kobe and Fisher for two straight. Sasha Pavlovich, bunch of Heat players for two straight boards. D out, Danny Green, Barbosa, and then last year, LeBron James and Mo Williams. So we welcome the connection to 33 straight NBA titles, four time NBA championship, and member of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2016, Shaquille O'Neal, who joins us on behalf of Zales Jewelers to unveil the newly designed Hall of Fame ring, which will be presented to each inductee, excuse me, in the class of 2016. Shaq, good morning. I didn't hear that, Molly. Could you repeat that? What you just said? <laughs> yeah, well, would you like me to slow it down for you? <laughs> no, but this is the ring. Mm -hmm. It's a beauty. Man, t yeah, that's right. Turn it so we put a zoom in there so I can see it. Is it big enough to fit? Can't see right. that. Is it, big is it big enough to fit those fingers of yours? Yes, it is, but I'm not allowed to put it on yet because they haven't <laughs> called my name. You right. know how we do, Steve, and I don't want to earn it. When they call my name, then it's official. Well, you certainly have much deserved, and that ring is a beauty by Zale Shack. Before these guys get into it with you, I need you to break something down for me. Now, I just documented your storied career, but you told the vertical we only saw 30% of your real game. How is that possible? Stephen A. knows this. I was the first big guy to bring it down off the, off the backboard and take it down coast to coast with style cross people up, did that every now and then, just so you guys would show it on ESPN. But I really had all those attributes in my game, but because of the double and triple team, I never never really got to show it. So that's what I mean when I said that statement. You know, it's much more than Shaq to just bowing people in the mouth and throwing them down and, and throwing it down with force. Ain't that right, Max? <laughs> <laughs> no question. <laughs> Shaq, let me ask you this question, man. I mean, going into the Hall of Fame, don't this... try and be nice. No, don't try and be <laughs> no, nice. No, no, this is no, my no, first no, no, time no, no. on the show. No, well, well, Come with it. Well, first of all, oh, it's not your first time. It. It's your Look first time it, on a Max. new show. But let me, let me yeah, say yeah. that you. I'll get it, Max. Listen, I'll get in. <laughs> I'll get it in a second. You I'll get it in a second, okay? Careful what you wish for. I'm trying to be nice to start this off. You're getting ready to go into a Hall of Fame. As you reflect on your career, talk about what this means to you and why it means so much to you. You know, when I first started playing basketball, I was cut my freshman and sophomore year. 6'9", uh, couldn't dunk, couldn't play. Thought about giving up. But, you know, because I watched Dr. J and Magic and Larry Bird and guys like that, the dream continued. And then I met Coach Brown, and he offered me a scholarship right there on the spot. I was a terrible player. I went to Texas, made a name for myself. I uh, went to LSU, played behind Chris and Stan. Still wasn't as good as I would like to be. Stan and Chris left. I got my chance to shine. Uh, had a great college career. And when I came into the NBA, I knew that I was going to have to work. But I wanted to create my own niche. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be out here shooting jumpers. I'm not going to be doing fadeaways. I think I can get away with the power game. You know, I played against a lot of great centers, but they were on their way out. You know, Patrick Ewing, who we had a lot of battles with, he was on his way out. Uh, same, same thing with David Robinson, but you know it was, it was a lot of great center for me to, you know, test my theory with. And 
I was able to do it, and I was able to do it my way. And I had good, honest people in the media, such as yourself, Stephen A. Like, when I didn't play up to par, you would let me know. And, you know, I had so much respect for you and, you know, guys like Dan Patrick that when I heard that, I took that to heart because I know you guys are, are very, very respectful and you only talk about what you see. So I wanted to come in and just, you know, take over that, that, that power niche. They didn't want to shoot fadeaways. They didn't want to have a finesse game. I knew that if I came and played this way, I knew that I could possibly dominate. You think that power game would still work in this NBA, Shaq? It sure would. If you're paying uh, Mike Conley 153, you got to pay me 353 <laughs> tax free <laughs> for two years, Stephen A. <laughs> Shaq, when we reflect on your career, we're going to see somebody. I, I consider you the most dominant force of the modern day era. We haven't seen anybody as dominant as you since Will Chamberlain. But I will ask you this question because you were on the record just a few weeks ago making some news when you talked about Tim Duncan. You talked about how. He wasn't a true big man because he's a power forward. You're on national television. Elaborate on that because when we think about Tim Duncan, we think about a big boy who's obviously a five-time champion and, and, and garners respect. When you said that, you put yourself in a different class than him. Explain. Well, you know, when, when people ask who are the greatest big men to ever play the game, you never hear power forward's name. So I was under the impression that big men was always centers. You know, you know, I've heard you say many times the greatest big man, Kareem, Wilt, Bill Russell, maybe Akeem, then maybe me. Now, you hear a lot of other people say Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward to ever play the game. I agree with that. So I just don't want people to get mixed up with, with power forward and center. I know now the all-star ballot, they don't, you know, they have front court and back court because, you know, uh, you got, you know, centers playing stretch fours and stretch fives, but... He came in as a four. David Robinson was the center. The other guy, Rashawn Netrovich, was the center. Tim Duncan played the four spot. So that's what I meant when I said that. Wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Never be disrespectful. The guy is a great player. He has five, but I always thought he was a power four. Because again, when you say who's the greatest big man to ever play the game, you never hear power fours. They don't say Barkley, they don't say Malone, and those guys were fabulous players. They say Kareem, Wilt, and Bill Russell, big men, and Sha we are big men. Shaq, isn't there a difference with Duncan in the sense that he could play with his back to the basket, he could defend the rim, he did spend years, several years at least, not most of them listed as a center, you still wouldn't call him a big man? He was never listed as a center every time I played against him. He was, I, I mean, I always <laughs> played against David Robinson right. and the other guy. I'm sure, like, you know, later in his career he was center, but when he came in, he was at the power four position. But it is what it is. You know, I said it because I feel I have the right to say it. You know, as a guy that's played and a guy that, that, that played the big man position. And again, as a youngster, they say, hey, the greatest big men to ever play the game, big men, and they always listed centers for that position. Shaq. Going into the Hall of Fame, obviously, you're going to be somebody, regardless of your individual dominance, who, who is um, forever associated with one Kobe Bryant. Uh, so much has been made about your relationship with Kobe Bryant. I want you to talk about not only where it is today, but why was there ever a problem between you and Kobe Bryant? Explain that in your own words, please. I don't think it was a problem, and I think it was a problem that we both needed. You know, you know, every leader knows that you know in a leader in a leadership position, you have to focus on two things. You got to focus on the task, or you have to focus on the relationship. And when when I was the, uh, appointed the leader of the Laker team, the only thing I was focusing on Stephen A was the task. And you know, a lot of times when you focus on the task, relationship dwindles. Now, when I went to Miami, I focused on the relationship. With uh, D-Wade, we had a great relationship, and we were only able to win one, and then, of course, I got traded after that. But, you know, we, we were two guys that pushed each other, and I think when you got two great players on the same team pushing each other, everything else will fall in place. And, you know, a lot of people talk as, as if we didn't win any championships. We won three out of four. So, you know, if I had all over to do again, I'd do the same thing, and, I, and I'm sure he would do the same thing also. I still feel compelled to ask you this question in terms of where whatever friction started 
because we talk, we hear stories about Kobe coming into the league. We hear about you guys playing at Loyola Marymount or wherever it was that y'all were playing and how you, you, you were tempted to try and slap him upside his head and that he never forgave you for that. And that's where things started in terms of the hostilities or whatever the case may be. Any truth to that? Anything would you would like to explain to clarify in terms of how your relationship started in terms of it, it falling apart to some degree before y'all ultimately got it back together? Well, you know, it started when, when people started asking the question, whose team was it? You know, rather than just going out and, you know, playing, playing together, like the Spurs, like, you know, throughout the Spurs dominant reign, you never heard people say, oh, it's Parker's team, it's Duncan's team. You know, I think living in L.A., you know, we were more worried about the title of whose team it is. And, and then, you know, me being a traditional big guy, you know, it was my, you know, it was always my thought process. You got to play the game inside out, and I, sometimes I wasn't comfortable with the dribbling between the legs and just shooting and me not touching the ball. So, and you know, I'm sure he was, you know, not comfortable with just coming down and you know throwing the ball into me, and then you know hopefully I, I throw it back out. But again, it, it, it worked out for the best. I say this now, and we are the most dominant one-two punch little guy, big guy ever created. Ever created, and Shaq. I know it's been a lot of like, guards and centers, but we are the best uh, Laker one-two punch ever created. Shaq, I saw you guys at Staples once Dwight Howard was on the Lakers, and the way you two hugged it out just looked different to me, as though you guys looked at each other and thought, boy, I didn't know what I had until it was gone. Is that the relationship now with Kobe? Can, do you remember that moment where you saw each other at Staples once Dwight was on the Lakers? I do. I remember that uh, situation, but I can't elaborate on it because uh, snitches get stitches, Max. Oh. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> no, but it, it's just like, you know, you don't know how good you got something until it's gone. Mm. Like, you know, when, when I left that and, you know, and, and like, you know, when, when, when I left L.A., I got D. Wade, similar type player. But like when I when, when I went on after that, I was like, you know what? I had the greatest player ever. We could have won six, seven championships together. And, you know, you live and you learn. Shaq, you mentioned Miami earlier. Pat Riley recently said the Shaq acquisition was bigger than the LeBron acquisition. What's your reaction to that? I mean, I, I think uh, I was one of the reasons why the Miami culture became what it was. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but before I got there, the whole top tier was roped off. And, uh, you know, it, it was I that convinced Pat. It was like, Pat, let me, let me get about, about 40 floor seats and... You know, we put out some calls. You know, we called Denzel, we called Puffy, we called <laughs> Callen and said, hey, come to Miami, it's a great city, have fun. And then, you know, after that, it started blowing up. But, you know, the acquisition of the big three, they just added on to that. So uh, imagine like a, a, just a plain martini, and then you add the olive, and then you add all the other stuff. Shaq, let me tune into the analyst that is Shaquille O'Neal right now, as opposed to just the Hall of Famer. One of the things I've talked about when it comes to Pat Riley is that in the last couple of years, you've lost LeBron James. You've now lost Dwayne Wade. There's some friction, obviously, over the health issues of Chris Bosh in terms of Chris Bosh being ready to play and Pat Riley in the Miami Heat, you know, not really commenting on that. My position is Pat Riley is great. He's the winner within. He's, a, he's accomplished a great deal of things. However, at the same time, because he's old school and it's about doing things his way, he may have eventually alienated, he may have ultimately alienated the preeminent superstar in the game in LeBron James and ultimately a guy that helped him capture two championships in Dwayne Wade. Talk to us for a second about Pat Riley and how accurate of a depiction you think that is of him. A winner, a good man, incredibly accomplished, but at the same time old school at times to a fault. To that you yes. say what? I agree with everything you say, uh, but a, a, another thing about Pat Riley is he's honest. You know, when he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And, 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 and Pat Riley is all about the team. You know, you could be a great player, you could have done a lot, but if it's not, if it doesn't work out for the team, then he, he's going to make a decision. Uh, he put me, he put me in that position when I was there. Uh, my contract was up, and I could have signed, I think it was uh, 100 for five, or no, 120 for five, and then Pat came in and said, look, we love you. You could take the 120 for five, or you could take 100 for five and let me bring in Gary, Antoine, help Posey, let me help you get a championship. 
So what I liked about that situation is that he was honest, he was straight up, and that's just how Pat is. You know, Pat's not going to change. He's been very successful doing it his way. And, but, but again, he's all about the organization first. Shaq, since Jordan, we've seen you, we've seen Olajuwon, Kobe, LeBron. Who is the greatest player in the post-Michael Jordan era? Well, first, I got to give it up to Dr. J. A lot of people don't talk about Dr. J, but Dr. J, is, to me, is the creator of all that. But to answer your question, Max, because I really do love you more than <laughs> I love Stephen A. Smith. Stop lying. I'm going to say... Stop lying. I'm it's because you're go, a basketball player, not a boxer. Yeah, you're right. Well, I, I am a boxer. I beat up Oscar De La Hoya, and I beat up Sugar Shane Mosley. That's Look true. Up. But, yes, oh, that's but, going uh, out on a limb, considering yes. that you got him about 200 pounds and about oh, two stop feet. It. So there you what? go. There you so go, what? you bully. They... They stepped in the ring. But anyway, I'm going to go with Michael Jordan. I mean, like, I, I've seen Kobe, I've seen LeBron, I've seen Grant Hill pretty hard away, but Michael was like a god on the court. Like, first time we played against Michael, I, I actually seen him go to a player and tell the player what he was going to do. Hey, I'm going to dribble between my legs left. I'm going to pump fake. If you go for it if you want to, but I'm a shooter, it's going to be all that. And he did it. And from that point there, I knew he, he was real. But, Shaq, I'm so, asking since Jordan. I think we accept oh, Jordan is Jordan. one. You, I'm, yeah, I'm, I want to know where you think you fit in with Olajuwon, LeBron, and Kobe. Who is number one since Jordan? Uh, I probably have to go with the Copester, you know, because you know his his attitude was Jordan-like. Like he was able to, you know, take over games, especially in the fourth quarter. For example, like when I tested Kobe out for his last game, I said, "Kobe, I need you to hit 50." He said, "Nah, I'm not gonna do it." But when he saw me there and he started going, like he said, "You know what?" You want me to give you want me to give 50 big dog, I'll do it for you. And he's always had that ability, because you know, it'll be times in the game, especially in the playoffs where I'm not really going or I'm tired, and I'd be like, Kobe, I need you to take over. And he would take over every time. Fifty out of fifty times. Like it, it, like it was never a time where I asked Kobe to, to take over the game and he didn't perform. So to answer your question, I gotta go with the Copester. My last question, Shaquille O'Neal, is this. During your career, particularly during, during the three-peat years. You called the Sacramento Kings the Sacramento Queens. How the hell do you go from calling them the Sacramento Queens to being an owner of the Sacramento Kings? A part well, of them. Vivek, well, Vivek is a good friend of mine. Mark Mastro is a good friend of mine. And I always wanted to, to, to own the team, and that opportunity came up. And, you, you know, uh, obviously I'm not, you know, the, 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 the main go-to guy when it comes to owning the team, but I just wanted to be... Be, be part of a team with, with a great group. And, you know, those guys are a great group. We're, we're struggling a little bit right now, but, you know, we're learning from our, from our mistakes, and hopefully we, we, we will become a contender like we used to be back in the day. But, you know, that was all done for marketing. You know, they, they had a lot of guys, and we had a lot of great battles, and I just wanted people, people to tune in to watch that game. And it worked. It worked. You're right. It did work. We certainly tuned in to watch all your games. Loved watching you play, Shaq. Now love watching you break down the games as an analyst. We so appreciate you being here. Come join us anytime. These two are a lot. He's not welcome. A lot for He's not welcome. Handle. He's not Open welcome. invite Shaq anytime, is Shaq. as good on TV as he was on the court. Right? But no, but seriously, um, I, I read your lengthy resume earlier. Congrats to HOF for now. Much deserved. Flex his Enjoy the festivities this week. Stephen A. always has to take over. I'll see you Friday, man. Time. I'll see you Friday, All right, man. brother. Love you. All right, Thank boys. you. All right, Max. Thanks, Shaq.